Hello, everyone. Welcome to the RFA MD podcast. I'm your host, Philip James, and today's guest is Dr. Arivelto Volpi from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Dr. Volpi, welcome. Thank you, Philip, for the invitation. It's an honor, and I'm very happy to be here. Well, it's an honor to have you here. And for those listening, Dr. Volpi is a head and neck surgeon in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And Dr. Volpi, question for you. Tell us about your background. Why do you do what you do? How did you become a surgeon? Did you know you wanted to be a surgeon when you were a little a little kid? Or how did it happen? Yes, uh, um, always since I was a kid, I want to be a, a, a doctor to participate in team of a uh, head and neck surgeon. And I was enchanted about the world of surgery. So, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, so for this, I decided to do surgery, specifically head and neck surgery. So uh, this is why I, I uh, uh, go to this path. I went to this path because I, I went to, to, to perform surgeries, specifically head and neck surgeries. Well, it's an honor to have you here. And a little background for those listening or watching. Dr. Volpe's performed approximately 8,000 thyroidectomies, thyroid surgeries in his career, which spans more than 30 years. And he has also treated approximately 400 patients with thyroid ablation, which means no surgery. Are those numbers right, Dr. Volpe? Yeah, uh, I, I have almost 35 uh, years in practice. And uh, I'm performing these numbers. These numbers are correct. It's, it's amazing, but it's correct. What, what a career. We're looking forward to hearing more about the details of all your experience. Uh, but before we get started, why did you become a surgeon? And, and give us the evolution. Did you know you wanted to be a surgeon since you were a little kid? Uh, just give us a little background about why you do what you do. Well, uh, since I was a kid, uh, early, very early, I decided to be a doctor. And uh, when I started my uh, medical course, I w uh, was invited to participate in a surgical team as uh, a scrub, like a scrub nurse or something. And uh, I started to participate in, in surgeries and surgeries and surgeries since I was And I decided to go to this path and uh, uh, I start to work with a head and neck surgeon that invite me to, to participate in his surgical team and uh, I, after many times in uh, head and neck surgery I had this in uh, thyroid and parathyroid so uh, it's it's a long time on, on, on this uh, uh, on this way so you actually, when you went through the university, you knew immediately you wanted to be a surgeon. Yes, uh, at the end of my first year in uh, medical school, I uh, start to study uh, uh, more uh, more deep uh, um, anatomy, specifically neck uh, anatomy because I was invited to, uh, to watch a, a, a thyroid surgery. And uh, I uh, was enchanted by the neck anatomy for the details, uh, for the, uh, how delicate is uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, medical students related to, to research. And uh, the, the, I, keep on this this way and study more and participate in more surgeries and follow uh, this uh, this surgeon and well was a, uh, as a consequence of this I, I I became a had an ex surgeon any regrets are you happy you chose this well, career no I'm very happy I'm very proud to be a, a, a head and neck surgeon. And it's an honor to me, honestly, it's an honor to me when a, a patient decided to uh, uh, give me the honor to, to uh, 
take care of his health and mm. count on me to solve uh, his problem. Well, Dr. Volpe, the topic of this interview is to say no to thyroid surgery. Um, yes. And there's a, there's a lot to that. But before we get in deeper to the topic, let's identify that what thyroid disease can be treated with ablation. Well, it's a very interesting question. Um, as you told, um, I, we perform it in our, uh, uh, in our practice more, more than 400 uh, thyroid and parathyroid ablations. And um, since we started, we expand the indications. But of course, as you get more uh, confident in, the, in, the, in the, this kind of treatment, you can uh, help more patients to avoid surgeries. Nowadays, the vast majority of benign disease we can treat uh, uh, benign nodules we can treat by radio frequency ablation or uh, microwave but in our practice we use uh, much, much more uh, uh, radio frequency ablation uh, now we treat almost our benign uh, uh, thyroid nodules we can offer a possibility of radio frequency ablation for uh, uh, initial cancers, we have a very good experience in uh, radio frequency ablation, very few doctors. And when I saw his uh, presentation, I started to think, wow, it could be a good uh, option for some patients. study. And I visit uh, other, uh, uh, other centers in, in, in Europe that perform in a beginning to study and the most interesting was that when i uh, when i uh, i start to to uh, perform radio frequency ablation i uh, think that the patients wants to avoid surgery so uh, ablation will be an option to the patient avoid surgery but uh, what uh, impressed me, uh, 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 give me impressed, uh, was that the patients don't, many patients don't, uh, uh, don't uh, 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 want to avoid surgery. The first reason for many looking for uh, radio frequency ablations was about their quality of life. The patient told me, all the or know you are and that uh, the chance of uh, any major are very very small but i don't want to take pills for the rest of my life i want because my the function of my thyroid is normal i have a good quality of life and uh, my friend or my sister or my mother take pills and uh, 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 her life changes a lot after the surgery because he's he's not adapted to the use of uh, uh, hormones and I want to avoid hormones in my life I want to preserve my 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 quality of life it's 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 uh, it was so impressive because I impact in my mind because I had a, a surgeon uh, uh, mind <laughs> and it's different from the patient it, it's uh, interesting how to have to balance the uh, sometimes what the surgeon uh, the judgment of what is uh, uh, the better for the patient sometimes is not the patient think is better to him so uh, the radio frequency ablation uh, uh, this new uh, for, uh, this new treatment uh, opened my mind to to offer to the patients many uh, options to solve uh, the problem of the patient. And it's caused a big impact on uh, how I, I see the nodules or how I can treat these nodules. And it was amazing how uh, many patients uh, have a very good quality of life of, uh, 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 after ablation because they, uh, they, they're not nodules shrink uh, 
the, his, his uh, thyroid function is preserved and the patients are, are so uh, happy and uh, it, it's interesting. Hmm. Dr. Volpe, uh, look around the world, you know a lot of thyroid ablation doctors. Can you cite one, one case in particular that was most awe-inspiring, either you performed it or somebody you heard about performing it that really got your attention? Yes, there is a case that it's, uh, it's a very good example. I have uh, a patient, it's a 70 years old lady with a uh, a nodule is, become, is, is growing, growing uh, during the years. And he was very, very afraid about surgery, afraid about to have uh, pills of, of the rest of his life. And he's, uh, uh, he's so uh, happy when uh, I offer her the opportunity of do a, a innovative treatment at the, that time was uh, almost uh, four years ago, was one of the, my first patients in Brazil. And uh, he, uh, her nodule shrink on the first three months, third, and he, he was so uh, happy. Uh, he, uh, he, he, it's it's uh, so uh, important to us to see how the patient is grateful for the result of her treatment. Mm -hmm. And it's caused a great impact. To me and i start to think yes uh, this treatment worth a lot for the patients mm, fantastic um you know when we say the words say no to thyroid surgery but in the context of ablation what does that mean to you as a surgeon well it's uh, it's uh, it's a chance for the patients to preserve uh, uh the quality of life the treatment of general surgery, avoiding uh, scars in the neck and avoiding hospital stay. Uh, radio frequency ablation or you know, microwave or any kind of ablation represents a game change in terms of uh, thyroid nodules treatment. You know, you said the word quality of life. Um, it's yeah. true when a patient loses the thyroid, uh, life is never the same. I speak about that from personal uh, experience. And that may be one of the main reasons you offer appellation. But I want to ask you, as a surgeon, not every surgeon, thyroid surgeon, offers appellation. Why do you offer appellation? Because I was very concerned about, uh, uh, about how I can offer the best for my, my, my patients. I take contact with uh, uh, thermal ablation therapies in 2014 for the first time and since then i started to to use uh, to to learn and research and give contact with the key opinion leaders in that uh, that therapy and i started to think wow it could be a very good option for many patients that wants to uh, uh, avoid surgery because many patients postpone the surgery because they are afraid of surgery they are afraid of lose their quality of life good you know it's great to hear a thyroid surgeon who can offer an alternative that is no surgery it might be counterintuitive to some people listening uh but it's great um with that being said what are some world trends right now that you are seeing in regard to thyroid ablation? Well, this therapy is growing fast, very fast in the world because many and many docs are interested in to offer this, uh, this modality of treatment for their patients. And, uh, and it's important to say, the patients uh, are very aware about this oppor opportunity of option. So uh, many, well, many patients, came to me uh, uh, and say, oh, where I live or in, in my city uh, or uh, where my, my doctors don't uh, offer this, uh, uh, this possibility, uh, this uh, possibility of treatment for, for me. And I, I saw in the internet that it's a very good option. So I start to research where I can do this treatment. Uh, 
Yeah, I think we're seeing that more often where patients are becoming their own best uh, advocates. Uh, and they're taking their care into their own hands and researching what their best treatment is. And they're even willing to travel in many cases to save their thyroid. I have to say that, of course, uh, South Korea is the, uh, the, the, the country where uh, RFA started. But now we have many countries that can uh, have very experienced uh, uh, doctors uh, that offer this South America, for instance. We have very good uh, uh, ablation centers in uh, Brazil. We have many doctors in Brazil that now are performing RFAs. We have uh, in Ecuador, in Colombia, in Argentina, uh, in US, of course, uh, in Mexico is starting, and many countries in Europe, Italy, Italy, it's a great center of you have many, uh, many uh, universities and hospitals that offer this treatment, and uh, France and uh, Spain, uh, well, uh, Turkey, we have very good uh, surgeons, Egypt. We have many, many countries in uh, uh, in the world, and even more uh, doctors are being trained uh, to offer this, this uh, treatment for their patients. Okay, Dr. Volpe, uh, for the patient, what are the risks with thyroid ablation? Complication, it's the voice changes. Even though uh, these, uh, these changes are uh, very rare, permanent and uh, it's very uncommon you have this kind of complication it's the most common complication when you perform RFA that's uh, uh, that's why we can uh, we should talk with the patient during the RFA to because it's to uh, see if it, everything is fine with the the voice of the patient but when you compare the risk of voice change uh, with uh, uh, in, um, when you compare uh, the risk of voice change between uh, RFA and conventional uh, surgery, the risk of uh, of uh, RFA is it's uh, minimal, but it can happen. It's the it's the, uh, the most common complication. Well, uh, the the RFA I say the the recovery it's very very fast. Usually we we have uh, need just twenty four to forty eight hours to uh, total recovery of the patient. Usually the first in, in the same day of RFA the patient needs to to rest. Uh, but in, uh, in the day after the RFA the patient many patients uh, back to the work. Uh, uh, and in 24 hours, uh, all the patients have uh, almost 90% of his life uh, totally recovered. It's very fast when you compare with other modalities of treatment. Okay, great. Um, if a patient wants to get thyroid ablation, how should they go about selecting the best doctor? Wow. <laughs> Um, I, I suppose he, he have to research about the doctor that, that will perform RFA. I suggest to go to rfamd.com and uh, see uh, the profiles of the best doctors. And uh, it's interesting because I have the opportunity to treat patients uh, of other countries than Brazil. Uh, we already treated patients of uh, patients from almost uh, all over South America and the patients from Europe also come to Brazil to 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 do their treatment and uh, preserve the, the the thyroid. Wow, that's awesome that patients take their health so serious that they want to save their thyroid, preserve quality of life, avoid surgery. Yes. And they're willing to travel to other countries in order to to do so. Um, I think it's important for patients to hear that not every doctor is using ablation. And what do you? How do you describe? Um, what do you tell health pro 
professionals who are skeptical of ablation or resistant to the te technology? Well, uh, it's an interesting question because um, many of my patients uh, uh, talk with his doctors uh, about uh, the possibility of this treatment. And we are um, uh, spreading this knowledge uh, uh, among our, our colleagues in uh, presentations, uh, showing our experience in papers, uh, uh, presenting our many congress and proving uh, uh, the, uh, the real, real reliable, re reliability of this treatment. Uh, and uh, of course, it's uh, uh, when you, uh, uh, the medical community, but I, I have to say that we are in a very good path because and many doctors are interested in to, uh, uh, to train uh, this, this modality to get the quantity of this modality of treatment. And uh, uh, we are very confident that in a few years, uh, the uh, RFA will be very common in, in, in the practice of most doctors that deal with thyroid in, in his daily practice. You know, Dr. Volpe, right now we're at a time in history where, where innovation technology is moving so fast. And sometimes it's moving faster than regulation and policy. Can you think of an instance yeah. where, where you treated a patient in a way that guidelines would have recommended something different? And you chose to use ablation as a form of treatment, even though guidelines might have said surgery. Can you think of an example? Well, uh, I, I suppose the best example is the micropapillary thyroid cancer. Uh, even though this modality of treatment, it's not in the guidelines yet, uh, many uh, research and many, uh, uh, many papers in the medical literature are selected patients. Uh, in our practice, we have treating these patients uh, with uh, a initial uh, papillary thyroid cancers less than one centimeter in, uh, with very, very good results. So uh, I suppose this is um, a, a, a good example. An another uh, uh, another uh, a very good example is uh, uh, toxic nodules. It's very good how we can uh, treat these patients with excellent results. Awesome. Um, how about this scenario? Have you seen a patient who went to a doctor and the doctor said, you have to do surgery? And, and before they did the surgery, they came to your office and you said, listen, you don't have to do surgery. You can do ablation instead. In my practice nowadays, of course, uh, as uh, uh, many patients come to my office for a second opinion, and uh, after uh, I uh, see the, the patient, I do the ultrasound and uh, uh, do an analysis of the case. I can offer uh, radio frequency uh, uh, when you uh, do a surgery, you take out the nodule. When you do uh, ablation, you kill the nodule and uh, slowly the nodule will uh, shrink day after day. Fantastic. Okay, Dr. Volpu, now we're kind of coming to a close of this interview. For the next series of questions, they're rapid, rapid questions. How much does thyroid ablation cost in your office? Uh, uh, ablation in my office? It's uh, about with all the costs with the clinic, uh, equipment, and uh, anesthesiologist, and uh, and uh, in my my time, it's about uh, with all the costs is about for uh, for a thousand dollars. Where do you see treatment for thyroid cancer going in the next ten years? Well, 
it's, in, it's important to understand that now most of thyroid cancers are, uh, are thyroid uh, cancers uh, are, um, are diagnosed with less than one centimeters. So for these patients, we can have nowadays three uh, strategies. You can do just uh, active surveillance. Many patients don't need any treatment. It's just uh, an active surveillance. Many patients uh, should go to surgery, but for uh, not a total thyroidectomy, but partial uh, uh, surgery. And uh, many and many uh, and many patients are uh, uh, are uh, are good candidates to uh, radio uh, to thermal ablations. And ablation, uh, it's a very good option for small cancers. Mm -hmm. Okay, lastly, let's talk about doctor-patient communication. How do you communicate to your patient who has been diagnosed with papillary thyroid cancer? Well, uh, when you have the diagnostic of uh, uh, a micropapillary thyroid cancer, usually we say to the patients that, of course, it's not uh, a good news because cancer is always cancer. We cannot forget this. There is no good cancer. All cancer is cancer. But the good news is that you can uh, treat the cancer with uh, a very effective way, preserving, this, this, uh, preserving his thyroid, preserving uh, his quality of life. And with uh, minimally invasive treatment that uh, uh, can avoid uh, 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 a hospital stay with a short time of recovery and uh, uh, with uh, uh, very short time to back to his uh, life. Fantastic. Um, Dr. Volpe, before we say goodbye, uh, any final thoughts? That you would like to share? Yes, I uh, I I want to to say that uh, uh, radio frequency. Uh, 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 I want to say that um, thermal ablations are, are a very good um, option of treatment. He should be uh, performed by experienced doctors, and they have the and we have uh, the the patient, the right patient, the right disease, and the right doctor to to have a very good result with uh, his treat with the treatment uh, by uh, thermal ablations. Nowadays, uh, the indications are expanding, and we have uh, even more doctors uh, uh, that have all the the need. Fantastic! Uh, listen, uh, thank you so much for your time today. It was great seeing you. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Farewell, Dr. Popey. Thank you.